Can you hear us, Danny? Denny? I can, yeah. Good deal. We are now joined by Denny Hamlin. If you do have a question for Denny, go ahead and raise your hand in the participants queue and we'll go straight to questions. Our first question will go to Jenna Fryer. Go ahead with your question, Jenna. Yeah, thanks, I wasn't ready to go first. Um, Denny, when, uh, when Furniture Row got out of business, there was not many takers for the charter. It was very difficult to sell. Now that charters are for sale or becoming available, there's a long line of guys bidding and, and angling to get these. Why has that changed? Well, I, I think um, for one, the Furniture Row Charter was the highest ranked charter, so it, it, um, it was going to cost the most money. Um, you know, it, it, it accumulates, you know, probably double what some of these charters um, accumulate in revenue. Um, for some of the back charters. charters. So uh, the price is gonna be high. So you're gonna have to have a big initial uh, investment. And then on top of that, um, you know, the business model, we didn't see, there probably wasn't a, a horizon of, of the business model being better uh, in the near future. Now when the new car uh, started getting announced and you know, NASCAR really started taking initiatives to limit personnel, obviously uh, limit practice, things like that, that really helps um, the race teams. But uh, ultimately, I, I think you know, the team's getting a little bit more revenue and, and keeping a little bit more revenue is what's making it more appealing. Were you surprised at how many people you were up against trying to get one? No, not really. Um, I knew that uh, you know, there were going to be uh, quite a few takers um, for that, for that uh, particular charter. But, um, you know, before we even became interested, uh, you know, we knew that there was a, a list of, of people that uh, were bidding. So um, I just uh, was happy that uh, it ended up the way it did. And obviously, um, you know, uh, Bob and, and his whole his organization with Larry uh, was great to work with through it. Thanks, Denny. Thank you. Our next question will come from Claire B. Lang. Go ahead with your question, Claire. Thank you. Let's turn to Talladega, Denny. And how do you feel going there? You're in such a good position in points, but you have a win at Talladega, 13th best finish there. That's your stats as far as Talladega looks. How do you look at it? Uh, each race is individual and different. Um, I think, you know, we we obviously know we can win there. It's just a, a lot of it is, is circumstances. A lot of it is, you know, kind of putting yourself in the right place, which you don't always know what, what that place will be. Um, it's historically the playoff race at Talladega is, is pretty wild because you've already got you know, probably two thirds of the field that's been eliminated. That's you know really not racing for much other than trying to trying to win, uh, and you got some other ones that are you know it looks like going to be you know fighting tooth and nail for for stage points. So uh, I suspect it'll be pretty wild again. And and um, but I'm 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 confident that you know all of our cars are good enough to win every time we go there. It's just sometimes it's a number game where you don't. You know, we're as Toyota as an organization, we're short on numbers from everyone else. So we just kind of count on uh, other people to get selfish at the end and try to use them. So do you think that anybody will lose their mind trying to do something that, you know, we've seen it be pretty laid back lately at races we thought were going to be crazy. Will it bust out one race like at Talladega where all of a sudden there's a different mode or not? Because Talladega usually is like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it'll be any different than, I mean, we've seen crazy races at Talladega with a lot of wrecks, and we've seen some that, that don't have a lot of wrecks. So it's just, I think it's just, it depends. I don't think that anyone has a certain mode that they can switch to that will make them um, do something they haven't before. Um, I think everyone kind of knows how everyone drives at this point, and you kind of just plan uh, around that. you got to be aware of who you're racing around and how aggressive they typically are and just try to put yourself in the best spot. Um, but you know, it's, it's, this race is unpredictable as, you know, it could be no cautions, it could be 12 cautions. So uh, we just don't know. You have fun at Talladega. Good luck, okay? Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Woody Kane. Go ahead with the question, Woody. Hey, Danny, appreciate your time. Um, was hoping to get you to skip ahead for us next week. I asked uh, Chase Briscoe a minute ago about the differences between a roval type course where you're headed next week and a purpose-built road course in terms of how you drive them or attack them what do you what would you describe the differences as yeah it's so the way the roval um is is tough is that 
Um, I think, you know, they paved some parts of it and they used previous asphalt from like parking lots and whatnot, or, you know, access roads uh, for other parts of the track. Um, that's all fine and good, but like the Roval just doesn't have as many uh, passing zones and typically good road courses have, uh, you know, lots of passing zones. So like the Daytona road course, for instance, uh, I think there was six legit heavy braking passing zones where once you get going through the infield of the Roval, you kind of just are stuck there. You're not really, you know, there's maybe one corner that you can kind of dive bomb in there and make it work, but it's kind of follow the leader or follow the car that's in front of you for the most part once you get into the infield uh, of the Roval. It's very narrow, off camber, bumpy. Um, so uh, challenging, yes, uh, I'm, I'm great with challenging racetracks. It's just you, you want to have passing zones and the Roval struggles a little bit with, uh, with passing zones. Our next question will come from Michael Shelton. Go ahead with the question, Michael. Thank you very much. Well, Denny, you're on the pole this weekend at Talladega, and you've been in every position possible when it comes to that racetrack. You, when you won your race, you start. When you won your race in 2014, you started 34th, and then earlier this year you started uh, second, I believe, and finished fourth. So, how much will starting on the pole make a difference on Sunday? And just what do you? think is the key you know, when it comes to maintaining patience and knowing when to go for it when you deal with a track as unpredictable as Talladega? Yeah, you, I, I just try to manage my risk as much as possible. I mean, obviously, by starting on the pole, we'll be up front uh, for the very first portion of the race. Um, and, and hopefully I can set the tone, set the line in which, you know, where I want it to run. But, you know, it's likely, uh, you know, especially with this package that we have at the super freeways where there's a big pocket of air, um, we're going to get passed. We'll get passed pretty early in the race, and hopefully we can, you know, make that pass back and keep control of the race. But, you know, I, I, I think keeping yourself in the top four spots, um, although not safe, it's a safer place to be. Um, but, you know, when you find yourself getting shuffled uh, beyond that and getting boxed out where you can't, can't really go high, can't go low. Uh, you have to just kind of manage your risk and figure out, you know, where where you need to put yourself in the safest spot. So I think our points position. I think we need to have a, a good solid day. Um, you know, we're going to try to lock ourselves in just as soon as possible. Uh, so that would be the first stage. Uh, if we don't think that that's a good uh, option for us once the race gets going, we'll we'll alter that strategy and and uh, you know focus more towards the end of the race. So I just. I don't know how it will play out. It's kind of a wait and see uh, based off of, uh, you know, how the, how the pack's reacting. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. Our next question will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead with your question, Dustin. Thank you. Denny, where are you in terms of uh, leadership with your team? Who's handling um, the, the putting together a race shop, getting the equipment, resources, uh, getting the alliance uh, settled at this point for you right now? Um, we have uh, somebody working uh, who's um, – I don't know if whether I'm supposed to say or not. <laughs> we have someone working, a uh, former team president, um, who's uh, kind of facilitating everything. He's working on an interim basis, uh, helping things get going, taking kind of the load off of me uh, for the next six to seven weeks. So there's a lot of work that's got to get done. Uh, but obviously uh, we're, um, we're kind of leaning on him to, to get the list of – the laundry list of, of stuff done uh, over the next six to seven weeks while I'm uh, continuing to focus on, on, you know, winning a championship. So uh, we're, we're getting the parts and the pieces together. Um, I believe that, you know, we have um, the, the person in charge on the competition side that, um, that, that I want. Um, obviously uh, we have this other guy that's working on all the um, executive stuff. Uh, he's, he's working really hard on that right now. So, um, it's it's coming together. Uh, like I said, the long, you know, the, the list is long, uh, but they're knocking out things each and every day. So um, I I don't know if I can or can't share it. So I'm just probably not right now. Thank you. Yep. Our next question will come from Alex Andrea. Go ahead with the question, Alex. Hey, Denny. Thanks for your time. Um, yeah, I, I, we saw the, you know, 2021 schedule come out yesterday, and there's obviously a lot of road courses and, and new courses. And so I'm curious how you think, you know, your new team is going to fare given that schedule. I mean, do you realistically think you guys can be winning next year? 
Well, I think we'll have opportunities to win, no doubt about it. I mean, I think that there's you know, things that uh, I can work with Bubba on, uh, on the driver's side of things, uh, to, to improve uh, some, some, some parts of, of, of his game, I guess you could say. Um, I think that uh, our cars will be good. Um, you know, but, you know, new teams, it's very, it's very hard. It's very hard to win. I mean, I said this before that, you know, my teammate Kyle is, is one of the best out there and, and hasn't won yet in 2020. Uh, so, I mean, you need things to fall your way. You need to be good. Um, you got to have every piece of the puzzle right to win these races. Um, and, but I don't think that, I don't think when we go to a racetrack um, next year, there'll be any track where we say, well, we're not, we can't win here. Um, the, the equipment will be good enough. Um, I believe that we're putting the people in place that are good. Um, we're, we're not, you know, I, I do things the right way. I just, I won't ever do anything halfway. And I feel like, um, you know, we're going to build this from the ground up. It's not going to take, it's not going to happen in three months. We're not going to build an empire in three months, but certainly we have visions um, in the years to come to, uh, you know, build this into a, a big organization uh, like Joe Gibbs Racing. I mean, he, you know, I learned a lot from him. I think Tony learned a lot from him, uh, which is when he moved over to Haas and, and kind of took over there and, and, and running it. Uh, we, we want to kind of do that same, um, that mold and, and, and business philosophy that uh, I've learned from uh, Coach Gibbs. Thank you. And then kind of a, as a follow-up too, I mean, is it, is it going to be Toyota equipment for the new team? And have you guys decided on a name yet? Uh, again, that's on the list of, of stuff to do. Uh, we have not, um, you know, finished any manufacturer or, um, or alliance contracts. Um, you know, everything is up in the air at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Our final question will come from Daniel McFadden. Go ahead with your question, Daniel. Hey, Denny, um, since, since you guys announced the team just, you know, a couple weeks ago, how, how would you describe the reach? that this news has gotten for you from, from at least your perspective of, of how many outlets have you talked to that maybe you, the Denny Hamlin brand and then the NASCAR brand, maybe just haven't been able to break into up until this point. Yeah. I mean, I think there's been a, a lot of uh, you know, people reach out um, and, you know, whether it be companies, whether it be employees uh, that are interested. Um, I think that uh, this is obviously, uh, is, is, is very, very big. It's very groundbreaking in our sport um, to have this new team come in here and uh, be of the caliber that, that Michael is and how big of an icon he is worldwide. Um, it certainly brings a lot of attention. And, and certainly I see a lot of articles getting written by outlets that, that never cover NASCAR uh, at all. So um, it's, it's been big. I, I know I got the, the stats from uh, Jill and her team at NASCAR um, about you know, the reach, and I think it was a uh, 3.3 billion, uh, which is a incredible number. Um, and so I'm very proud of that. And um, just, you know, what, what we've been able to do in such a short amount of time has been pretty amazing. Can, can you like further explain what that 3.3 billion is? Yeah, 3.3 uh, billion is basically uh, kind of the reach. Uh, who, who has seen it, uh, who, uh, who this story uh, has, 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 I guess, seen it. Um, and so it's a very, very big number. And, and obviously um, I'm really excited that, uh, you know, we're gonna have some great opportunities and uh, partner up with some great companies and hopefully, um, you know, build this thing, you know, like I said, from, from the ground up, it's gonna take some time. We're gonna have to put ourselves in, in uh, you know, temporary spots before we go to a permanent spot. So I just feel like uh, we're, we're, we're set up pretty good right now. Uh, you know, although we've got a very short amount of time to get a lot of work done, um, I, I, I got the right people in place to do that. Great. Well, thanks, Denny. Thanks for taking the time to join us, and good luck this weekend at Talladega Super Speedway. Sounds good. Thank you all.